All right, so I'm standing here freezing next to Russ Johnston from Cavanta Energy. You didn't tell me it was going to be freezing up here in Oregon. Part of winter's in Oregon. My goodness, it's cold. It's like, what, 35 degrees? Yeah, it sure is. Woo. All right, so tell us a little bit about Cavanta Energy. Well, we've just entered uh, Cavanta Marion, uh, one of Cavanta's facilities. We service all of Marion County's refuse needs. We take all of these trucks that are coming in behind us, we use that as our fuel to produce energy and make electricity out of it. See, I'm baffled because you can take trash and turn it into energy? Yes, we sure can, and we're gonna show you that process today. Okay, so I'm sure you get this all the time. If you can do that, trash can become energy, why doesn't everybody do it? <laughs> a lot of folks do around the country. Uh, I think there's right around 86 facilities around the United States presently, and it just depends the community in and which way they decide to go with their refuse. And here in Marion County, they made the decision to make energy out of it. The entire county, Marion County, and this is the, the we're in the capital county of, of Oregon, right? Yes. So the entire county, nothing is landfill? Only products that aren't burnable or too large to fit into our process. Uh, they'll go to other processes. And really in Marion County, all the recycling is done prior to this facility. So all the paper and plastics are removed. We end up with what's remaining. And then we produce electricity out of that to finish the cycle. And we're gonna see all this, because yes, I'm just, I'm still kinda like, how? What can trash become? Fertilized soil for plants. It can be recycled into compost, and then you can make your garden beautiful by recycling it into your garden. If it's a bottle, it could become a can. Everything and anything can be made out of trash. I'm thinking clothes even can be made out of trash. We've gone out to the community today, this morning, picked up all this trash, and now we're bringing it back here. What exactly is going to happen here? What's going to happen is the load that we've been following today is going to be dumped into our storage area. And then you see the hydraulic grapple that's behind us? Yes. He's going to pick up that refuse, and then you'll see him spread and mix that refuse to make it more consistent because that's the fuel we use to burn to make electricity. So when we're talking trash, so let's just be clear to everyone here. We're, we're watching it come out now, but uh, normal, everyday home garbage we throw in our trash cans. Yes, whatever you throw into your trash can that's not recycled ends up here. Now I noticed I saw like an aluminum can right there. Obviously that's recyclable. And a lot of these papers that are in here could be recyclable as well. Do you pull those out? We collect about 80 tons a week of ferrous metal that we sell as scrap. That's so now how many homes did this truck stop at this morning, approximately? Oh boy, that's, that's a good question. I'm gonna say he probably stopped at about 200 homes. Okay. What if, if it's not turned into energy, what else could be done with this trash? Uh, typically, if, it, if it's not turned into energy here in Oregon, it goes to a landfill. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. At the present rate in the U.S. alone, over 3,500 acres are lost annually to landfills. So we've tipped the load, and now he's moving it in, huh? Yes, he's clearing off our tipping floor for more trucks that are coming in behind uh, our driver. He'll tip it into our storage area, and then you'll see the crane come down behind us. He'll grab that waste to keep it out of the way of the incoming trucks, and then he'll spread and mix it to keep it more consistent. This is everyone's trash is dumped in here, and I gotta be honest with you, this is a clean facility. <laughs> yes, and we keep it that way. And we tip about 130 trucks a day five days a week and on the weekends routes really aren't run in the community so we get minimal loads mainly for just from transfer stations here in Marion County. All your energy, all the electricity is generated from the trash in this community. Yes, sure is. That's, that's still, I'm still, you know, trying to wrap my head around that. <laughs> huh. Is it just me? How can trash become energy? Trash can become energy uh, by growing plants and things can eat plants and energy can be formed because cows eat plants and then we can eat the cow and then we can have energy. Breaking it down into uh, fossil fuel, I think? Um, well, like, <laughs> um, <laughs> Plants could be decayed for fuel and to help your cars uh, run instead of gas. And 
corn can be used to use as fuel too. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down the process for you in a visual format. Russ, let's take it from the beginning. All right, so trucks tip in this area right here. Yes, right into our storage pit. The grapple puts the move, move stuff around in the storage pit right here. Mm -hmm. All the trash and smells a little bit like the trash, but okay, all right. And then it's picking it up way up here like you're talking about. This is about 70. Yep, about 70, 75 feet. All right. Uh, from the bottom of our storage pit and deposit it into this feed hopper. Okay. So this is the feed hopper. So the feed hopper is right here, and yes. then, then the weight is just pushing it down. Yes. And then the, the, where's the heat? Where's it right uh, there? Right here to a hydraulic ram that pushes it out onto this great surface where it's burnt, and that's where the heat is, about 2,000 degrees. Is that flame really that big? Uh, yes, and we'll take a look at that. So this is all the trash becoming, it, what was it becoming? It's, it's becoming residue residue which reduces the volume of that incoming refuse by about 90 percent so trash is becoming residue yes and what is residue let's let's make it that's what remains after we've burnt all the carbon out of the garbage residue is remaining okay inert what is inert a type of insect inert is cement inert is um it's, it's a physics term, I think, and um, it has to do with inertia, which has to do with force and, and speed and something like that. Inert, um, like inert gas. You can't see it or you can't, I know it's scientific, you can't see it or use it. I should know this and I'm going to research it today, I do not know. <laughs> inert. Well, why should you know this? Because I'm a science teacher <laughs> in fifth grade. I don't actually teach inert gases, but I should No. Don't tell my husband. <laughs> okay. And what's inert? There's there's no value left in it. Oh. It's dirt. It's dirt. So we're turning trash into dirt. There you go. Wow. Why'd you just say that in the beginning? <laughs> all, right. all right. So it's all burnt. The, the dirt, where, what's this up here? What, what's that? Uh, what that is is as we burn the waste, any fine particulate will carry over with the air as it goes back through the boiler where we collect the heat. Mm -hmm. So we collect that particulate out so it doesn't go out into the atmosphere with bag houses here. Also, you have little people standing there holding a net out. Oh, close. <laughs> How close? <laughs> the clean air goes on up our exhaust. Mm -hmm. The particulate that's collected out comes right back down into the bottom ash that's coming off the grate. So the particulate, let's break it down, all right? So for everyone, so everyone understands, what exactly is a particulate? A particulate is if you look at an exhaust on a vehicle mm -hmm. that was smoking, yeah. that's particulate. Okay, so it's visual. Visual black smoke kind of. That's what you can see. So it all become, goes into this little ash pile right here. Exactly. Starts off this big pile right here, ends up that little pile right there, right? 90% yes. reduction in volume. So this big pile becomes this little pile. Exactly. So the steam is blowing and to, it's just turning a fan? To turn it, exactly. And then that turning the fan creates? Electricity through a generator. And then out to the community. It's such a simple process. It's just hard for me to wrap my mind around. <laughs> let's go finish looking at the process. Come on, let's get out of here. All right. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. For every ton of waste processed, we avoid the need to import one barrel of oil or mine one quarter ton of coal. Did you see that? Did you see that? Yeah. What is a grapple? A grapple is a type of fruit. A grapple is a plant. A grapple, that's a big claw that comes down and grabs the garbage and pulls it up and takes it to other places so they can be recycled. Mm, a grapple is a grape and an apple mixed together. That's what it is. Grapple, have you had them? They're delicious. 
Yeah, so you know, to recap, a, a large pepperoni, um, uh, Canadian bacon with mushrooms and sausage, and um, extra cheese, please. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, that, no, that's for Dwayne and I. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, oh, we're recording. Hey, what's up? All right, so I'm sitting here in the grapple captain chair with Dwayne. Dwayne, how's it going? Good. Good. So describe what we are doing over here. Yeah, I'm uh, moving the garbage as the truck's dumping it into the pit, moving it off to the side so they can continue to dump. And also mixing the wet and the dry fuel together so that it'll burn. This is pretty cool because you're using both ends of joystick just like you would on a video game, right? Right. Are you a big video gamer? Uh, I do a little of it, not, not a lot. Well, that's because you do it at work all day, right? That's right. <laughs> so now, when you go to um, a place where they have those claws that pick up teddy bears, you're pretty good, aren't you? Well, actually, I've tried those, and those machines are designed to take your money and not, <laughs> not give you very much back. <laughs> so if anyone would know it, it'd be Dwayne. So uh, Dwayne, come on now. Have you ever hit or bumped one of those trucks down there? Yes, I have. <laughs> I haven't picked one up, but uh, I've run into a couple of them over the years. Oh, really? <laughs> Have you ever knocked one over with that thing? No, actually, I just barely bumped them. But, but just a little bump with this thing. <laughs> crane, they, they, they feel like you tried to take them out. All right, so after you put it all up in the hopper, then it, uh, your, your job's done, right? Yeah. All right, so I guess we're uh, going to leave you be. All right, thanks a lot. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for letting me not operate the crane. I really appreciate that part. So will my boss. <laughs> fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Covanta facilities recover and recycle over 360,000 tons of steel every year. That's enough to build over 275,000 hybrid cars. So this grapple, who's hanging on to a 5,000 pound pile right there, huh? Yeah, hey, Dwayne's actually feeding the second feed hopper for the facility, but here's the feed hopper in front of us for one of our processing units. You can see the weight of that yeah. garbage pushing it down. And that's just pure weight that's going, like you said earlier. Gravity feeding wow. down onto our feeders. Uh, if you look at it, you have to look at it very, like, still. Check that out, because you can see it moving. That's how fast it's feeding. <laughs> Five, 550 ton a day is processed through this facility. Wow. What we can't see is being burnt, right? Yep, making heat out of it, steam, and then electricity. Do you got room in number two, uh, Dwayne, to feed that one? Yeah, I can put it in here. Can I give him a go ahead? All right, Dwayne, go for it. OK, here we go. Whoa. That's someone's couch. Anything that people don't recycle, we end up with. So what no, What can't you put in these things? You, just said, you said you put a boat in earlier, right? It depends. We put a lot of items in that we can crush up with that crane. Yeah. So we can go ahead and process it through and then collect the metal out of it on the back end. That's what's important about so it. So I see that. That looks like a bed frame right there, a metal bed frame. So that, you'll pull that out. That'll be collected on the back end and sold as scrap. That's going fast. We've been talking for about 30 seconds and it's already like halfway down. Yeah, just about ready for another grapple load. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Covanta has reached a significant milestone, converting more than 250 million tons of waste into energy. That's over 30 million garbage trucks full of waste that if placed end to end, would circle the earth over four times. Woo. Woo. We're warming up, aren't we? Warming up here. Yeah, that, how hot is that, 2,000 degrees? About 2,000 degrees. Okay, so th this is basically, this is the inferno, the flame, the big old thing on that, that chart you showed us. It's burning everything up. Yes, this is our stove below our tea kettle. Everything here is pretty much double. Okay. Two processing units, two cranes, because even though we're shut down for maintenance, mm -hmm. for other reasons, waste doesn't stop. Right. It continues to come, and we've got to process that. Okay. So when Dwayne and I were, well, it was mostly Dwayne, because he didn't let me operate the thing. But that's okay. That's another story, and I'm not that bitter about it. But uh, anyhow, Dwayne was picking up all the trash. He's putting it in the hopper, just like we saw. And then, then the, the inferno's blazing it all up. And then we have the ash going down there. And then you the particulars going up top, and then meeting its way down with the ash. Yes. The turbine, we're, we're controlling the turbine down here? Yep. Where's that? The turbine's down here, okay. and actually, 
So we talked about that fire, that heat from it is what we heat our tea kettle with to make steam. Right. We use that steam to turn a turbine generator here to make our electrical output. It's 13,000 kilowatts that we're producing right now. That sounds like a lot. Yeah. We use in plant about 1.5 megawatts and then 11 is what we ship out to the local utility. We use that amount of power to power the facility so we're self-sustaining and then export the excess and the excess that we export is enough to power about 10,000 homes continuously. Now we can't see electricity. We could, but that would be very dangerous, <laughs> right? Right. We can't see electricity. You're not going to let us in to see the inferno because it's 2,000 degrees. You're probably not going to let us see the boilers, right? You're not going to let me operate the crane. <laughs> what else? Oh, you didn't let me get close enough to the, uh, I had to stay behind the red line. So is there anything I can do? Well, from the people I've talked to, no. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's what we call a very big setup. We we're going to look at the turbine. Oh, so we're going to look, you'll let me look at the turbine. What is a particulate? A particulate is something very particular, and it is a little part of something particular, so it's a little particulate. Particulate is a type of animal, um, a leaf. A particulate is a smaller part of a particular. <laughs> it's it's the, the mini version. <laughs> So this big blue thing here in the middle, this is a turbine? That's the turbine. That's the fan we were talking about earlier. Yeah. That the steam is rolling. Okay. And it, it puts enough energy into that fan to turn the generator here on the far end to make electricity. So the thing on the right is the generator, and the thing on the left with this rounded, rounded shape is the fan. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And we take that steam that we put into the turbine once we've used all the power out of it, mm -hmm. we condense it back into water and pump it right back into our tea kettles to make more steam. You're taking all this trash, which is very visible, very large, and you're turning it into, in, well, for the most part, invisible electricity. In invisible until you turn your switch on. Until you turn your switch on. And then, of course, you have left a little bit of remains left over, the ash that you've mentioned a couple times. Yes. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. The U.S. EPA has stated that waste-to-energy plants produce electricity with less environmental impact than almost any other source of electricity. So we've made the energy, and we're looking at what's left over? This is the residue that's remaining. It's about a 90% reduction in volume. What we take is as the residue comes out, we collect, we collect off the ferrous metals which we collect about 80 tons a week of ferrous metal that you see in this bay. That's that right there, yep. right? That we, that we sell as scrap. Oh, okay. The ash residue that he's loading into the truck here, that goes up to a monofill that's just north of the facility. So again, this is, after everything's been burned, this is what's left, I'm, for lack of better terms. <laughs> the, this is what's remaining. So all that trash that we dumped in our trash bins last week and this week and it's become this. Give you a perception is we get about 130 trucks across the scales with refuse a day. Yeah. We load about six in ash. Wow. So that's the reduction in volume. So 130 trucks coming in, six going out with what's left over. That's what's left. 90% reduction in volume. Why doesn't everybody do this? That, it is a good question, and, and people just make their own decisions. We think this is the right decision. Do something with that refuse, make energy out of it. Absolutely. Wow, so now where, where's all this ash gonna go? A monofill, what, what's a monofill? What is a monofill? A monofill is a piece of dirt. A monofill is not a duofill. It would be a single version of the duofill. <laughs> a monofill, hmm. My Greek and Latin roots in fifth grade would tell me that mono means one, Phil, depending on how it would be spelled. See, I don't know the actual answer, so I'm trying to dissect it. Phil, oh, I'm not sure. One of something. Monofill is the only item that goes into the fill is the ash. Okay. So it's not it's not a landfill. It's a monofill. The only thing that goes in is the ash. It's just ash. Okay. 
That's all that people are putting into their refuse right now that's not getting recycled. Mm -hmm. We're collecting it out here. Now, you don't encourage the residents to do that, though, right? No, no, do it at the curbside. Yeah, do it at the curbside. It gives more capacity for the facility for additional refuse coming. You know, because I would, I would imagine being at home, watching this process, and I'm thinking, oh, great. I don't have to throw anything in my recycle bin anymore. I just put it all in my trash can. Not so. Uh, all the paper, plastics, glass, those type of products are recycled up front of this facility. Mm -hmm. uh, what's remaining, the people that don't recycle, that's what we end up with. That's what we process here. Right. You know, it's amazing because I, I, I saw your, your trash cans are pretty small here too, right? Yes, Thin they are. As compared to the recycle bins. That's right. So Marion County right now is the highest recycling rate in Oregon with an energy from waste facility at over 56% Wow, recycling. Wow. That's not only the highest in Oregon, it's one of the highest in the nation. So have we completely closed the loop on this process? This is really the end of our process here. Okay, now where is, where, should we follow electricity anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, we're not touching the electricity. It's pretty remarkable that we can take household trash and turn it into electricity. Whoa, that's pretty cool. Well, I want to thank Russ and everyone here at Cavanta Energy for teaching us about this process. And I also want to thank you, Joseph, for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. Now, if there's something that you're curious about, why haven't you let me know? I, I mean, I know you're curious, but I haven't heard from you yet. It's simple. All you have to do is go to kvcr.org, click on the Curiosity Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. It could be you that sends us on our next green quest. Now remember, this is our planet, and it is our responsibility to take care of it. So I'm curious, have you gone green? I'm Joel Green, and I'll see you next time. Hey, you know what else electricity runs? It runs computers, and of course, telephones. Yeah, can you please hold my calls till afterwards? Thank you. Of course, calculators to see about, ooh, we're over budget. No, I'm serious when I say I'm very familiar with the three R's, but you keep saying there's a fourth R out there. Rethink. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm rethinking what you're saying. I'm thinking that the three R's that I'm very familiar with, I mean, you at home, you can go ahead and say along with me. Reduce. Russ. Reuse. Reuse. Recycle. recycle and rethink. That's what we're doing, Russ. We're, I'm thinking about it. What, what is the fourth R? I mean, you guys promote this fourth R, but you haven't said it to me yet. So, we're going to reduce. Reuse, recycle, huh? Recycle and rethink. What do you mean recycle? What? I am thinking about it. What do you <laughs> rethink? I, how many times do you want me to rethink this thing? I mean, reduce, reuse, recycle, rethink. Oh, I get it. I get it. I don't get it. This program is made possible by support from the City of Montclair. If you'd like to order a copy of this episode or a previous episode, visit us at www.curiositychest.org. The cost is $19.95.